Hello my friends and welcome! A few months ago I built this UPS with a lithium iron phosphate battery. I tested it for a while and now I can show you the results. So prepare yourself for some boring calculations. I'm using this UPS for an optical network terminal with 12 volts and an optical receiver with 5 volts. But you can use it for other devices too. It also has a USB Type-C output with fast charging. Let's test it in real life conditions. The original adapters for the devices are not needed because the UPS has an internal charger that powers everything. The UPS is built in a circuit breaker box, so I can mount it on the wall next to the other panels. I will place it here for the moment to test it. Let's turn it on and power the devices. I need to check the outputs first. 12 volts is for the optical network terminal. The 5 volts connector for the optical receiver needs an adapter, so you don't accidentally plug in the 12 volts connector. After turning on the devices, we need to wait a minute for the ONT or router to connect. The internet LED lights up, so we have internet connection. The UPS is fully charged. Let's simulate a power outage. The mains power is out for the entire apartment and we still have internet connection. The UPS and all the devices are working on battery backup now. You can see that the battery drops pretty fast to 75%. I'll explain why in a minute. Let's turn the power back on. We still have internet connection and the UPS battery is charging. After a minute it will go up to 100%. There we go, it's fully charged. So you can see the UPS is working fine, but there are a few more details to clarify about building it. For example, is it necessary to modify the charger and install it inside the UPS enclosure? Can't I just plug it in? Sure, you can use an external charger, it will actually be easier to build the UPS, but it will have a lower efficiency. Let me explain, this power cable is similar to the laptop charger cable. The power supply represents the laptop charger. And at the other end of the cable, I will connect a 2 amps load and measure the output power. The current consumption is the same at both ends, according to Kirchhoff's first law, but you can see a voltage drop at the load end. I will connect the load again so you can see the voltage. So the voltage drops from 18.5 volts to 17.9 volts. Because of this cable, we've lost 1.19 watts of power. With a 3 amps load, the power loss will be even higher. It's not much, but it's an avoidable power loss. Also, to compensate for the lost voltage, the converters inside the UPS will draw more current from the charger. That means a lower efficiency and more heat. So this is why I chose to install the charger inside the UPS enclosure. The output power of the laptop charger, or any charger, is limited. So I want it to be as efficient as possible. I also need to calculate the efficiency and current consumption of all the components, so they don't exceed the output power of the charger. This is the converter for the 12 volts output. Even though the ONT draws less than 0.25 amps, I tested it with a 1 amp load, in case you use it for other devices. It draws 0.73 amps from the charger, with an efficiency of almost 88%. This is the 5 volts converter. 370 milliamps from the charger and an efficiency of 78%. The fast charge USB Type-C output is set to 12 volts. I will connect a 21 watts load and it has a very good efficiency of 91%. And finally the battery charging converter. It charges the battery with maximum 1 amp and it draws 0.86 amps from the charger. All of these components plus loads should not exceed the 3.5 amps that the laptop charger can deliver. To make sure of this, I will connect all the converters with loads to the charger. My volt ammeter will be connected between the charger and converters. I also added a diode here because it's needed in the UPS circuit. The diode has a small forward voltage drop that will lower the overall efficiency a bit. The converters are powered, now let's connect the loads. 
I will even add the one amp load to the battery charging converter to simulate charging the battery at the same time. All the loads are connected and the overall efficiency is 87%. The total current consumption from the charger is less than 3.5 amps. Even if the cooling fan turns on, it will draw an extra 60 or 70 milliamps and it will still be within limits. But this is an extreme scenario to test the components and make sure everything is safe. In reality, the current consumption will be much lower and the efficiency higher. Because the loads draw less current, the battery will be recharged very rarely and I will probably never use 21 watts from the USB Type-C output and I also soldered all the wires instead of using the imperfect screw connectors. I've showed you all these calculations in case you build a UPS for other devices so you know how to calculate everything to make it safe. Now I will show you in simple steps how to set up this battery indicator. It has 7 modes. To enter setup, press long on the set button. The first mode is for ternary lithium battery. We have zero cells, so let's move on to the second mode. This is for lead acid batteries. It's set to 10 now, and we will modify it in the next step. The third mode is for lithium iron phosphate cells. We have four cells in series. To modify the value, we press short on the lower button. 3 cells, 4 cells. In the next mode you can set a custom voltage for a custom battery. We don't need it. The fifth mode is for the backlight timer. It's set to off because the timer is off, so the display will always be lit. This is the low voltage alarm. I will set it to 11 volts. And the last mode is for the alarm sound, but this display doesn't have it, so it doesn't matter. And now this battery indicator is set for a 4S lithium iron phosphate battery pack. I will use my variable power supply to test it. You can see the battery level and percentage decreasing according to the voltage. But this is not accurate, because the discharge cycle of a lithium iron phosphate battery is not linear. This is the correct discharge curve, so you can see that in the first minute the battery voltage drops from the maximum voltage almost to the nominal voltage of 12.8 volts, and then it will discharge very slowly. That's why the indicator shows the UPS battery at 75% from the first minute. But from 75 to 25% it will take a long time to discharge. So this battery level indicator is not accurate, but it's still useful in an emergency. And I think it looks very nice too. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos, please check out my Patreon page. What about the autonomy of this UPS? Well, it's difficult to calculate the efficiency when working on battery power, because the battery voltage is decreasing, so the current consumption of the converters will increase. I tested the battery before building the UPS and it has a total energy of 71 Watt hours. My two loads have a combined power consumption of only 3.83 Watts. So if I calculate the autonomy with an estimated efficiency of 86%, I have almost 16 hours of battery backup time. That's pretty good for this small battery. But let's say you have bigger loads with higher power consumption, 20 watts, so it will have a lower efficiency, let's estimate 85%. In this case the UPS will have an autonomy of 3 hours, so you will probably need a bigger battery. I tested this UPS for a while and it works fine, the cooling fan never started because the loads are very small, the UPS case has venting holes so nothing got hot inside. In the future I plan to build a more powerful UPS, with an inverter and a bigger battery. So if you enjoyed this video please share it and leave a comment below. Share your thoughts about this project. Thanks for watching, bye!